Hello and welcome today to the Christian Construction Podcast. Today we'll be dealing with a much needed topic to discuss, and that is the issue of pornography. Stay tuned to the Christian Construction Podcast. And welcome back today to the Christian Construction Podcast. I'm here with Brother Matt Panther and Brother Gabe Carson. And uh, we do hope that the podcast finds you in good health, having a good day on this Thursday. And this is, uh, this is our third episode. It's actually the fourth one, but it's our third one uh, due to uh, the way we kind of did that last week. And yep. I thought it went really well. Oh, yeah. um, I, we do hope, want to remind you, first episode was kind of a meet and greet a couple weeks ago. And then last week on Thursday, we released episode two, part one, which was finding your place in the local church. And then we released a second episode that went to air on that Saturday for young preachers specifically. Now, anybody can watch it, but if you're a young preacher, we want you to go back and watch that and then be sure to like, share, or comment uh, or subscribe on Facebook, YouTube, and those other forms of social media. All right? All right, guys, y'all doing good today? Doing good, doing good. Amen. Amen, Brother Matt. You doing all right? Doing good. Got Praise the Lord. Good bus meeting. Visitation this morning. I had a good day. Blessing. Everything was good. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, thank the Lord again. Thank all of you for joining in, tuning in with us today. And, uh, man, we are really excited uh, about bringing this special episode to you. Very and, important. And uh, this is kind of, we're kind of early on in the life of the podcast, but um, we felt like, had a lot of response from you folks who asked yeah. us about doing a, an episode and discussing uh, the subject of pornography. And so that's what we Biggest want topic. to do today. It Biggest really is. Yeah. It really is. Uh, it is uh, it, it's, it's killing killing a lot of our young people, killing churches. And uh, then Sin of homes, the day. Marriages, Sin of the day. Sure. Um, and uh, I, I think personally, um, if you study it scientifically, I would say it's probably the drug of choice. Oh, yeah. That most people are using sure. is destroying their lives. You can't see it on the outside of your body like the rest of them. That's what's so behind. scary. So we want to give you a little bit of the structure. We, we went over uh, uh, the, in the last episode what we call the blueprint. And uh, so the blueprint today is going to be two parts. First of all, we're going to talk to you and give you some things concerning the reality of pornography. Uh, and, and we can't just turn our heads to it. Can't stick your head in the sand. That's right. The reality is that it's an issue. Oh, yes. uh, it, it is definitely sure. a problem. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about that. And then uh, in the second part of that, or se- the second shift of, of uh, the podcast today, we're going to talk about the ruin. And there's no doubt uh, that it is ruining homes, Absolutely. lives, and folks, uh, uh, oh, yeah. young people, young people, youth groups, churches, uh, churches, not just anywhere, but but good, solid churches. This is not happening out, you know, just across America, other places. This is happening at home in every That's church right. that I know Everywhere. of. Um, and so, first of all, before we do anything, we want to t- go to the Word of God. And uh, so I want to turn your attention uh, to the Word of God concerning what the Bible says about the subject of, um, it doesn't, of course, the word pornography is not actually found in the Scripture. But there are some, uh, there are some Scriptures that deal with what pornography is as far yep. as the sin of it. Uh, First of all, I want you to look in Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 28 and 29. Jesus said this, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. I think that's interesting that it says that he's committed adultery with her, which means there's some reciprocation there. She is guilty just as he is guilty. And then the Bible says, And if thy right eye offend thee, Pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And so I think that's a great scripture. And then in Matthew chapter number 15, verses 18 and 19, Jesus said this, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart, notice what God says, what Jesus said proceeds out of the heart. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. And so we see these two of these uh, sins that he mentions 
uh, are of the sexual nature. And if we're, if we're realistic about it, the majority of these evil thoughts, well, that would involve, that could be an evil thought of, sexual, of the sexual nature. Obviously, adultery, fornication, theft. Really, you think about theft. It's not your wife. It's not your wife. You have stolen something that does not belong to you. Uh, and so there, and then in, in turn, in, in essence, you are, if you claim to be a child of God in doing all of these things, you are, your life or your actions are blasphemy right. against right. God. Yep. And then, of course, we could go to the book of Leviticus um, where nakedness is condemned in Leviticus chapter number 18 and a good part of chapter number 18 verses, I think, 1 through 19 deal with the sin of nakedness. And then, of course, Genesis chapter number 9 where Noah and his three sons were there, and it was Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the Bible says that Ham, uh, the father of Cain, saw the nakedness of his father, and he told his brethren without. And then it says, Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon both their shoulders, went backward, covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. Noah awoke uh, and, and from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And so God placed a curse on Ham's son, Canaan, on the descendants of Ham, due to the fact that he was looking on, gazing on, uh, the nakedness of his father Noah. And so there's a lot of things to cover there. But uh, first of all, I guess we'll talk about the reality of it. Now, whichever one of you guys want to start us off, Brother Matt, you want to start us there, dealing with the reality of pornography. Yeah, we'll get into the reality. Uh I got some statistics here, and uh, we'll go through some uh, true, some some facts about pornography, and uh, you know, some of them you know really surprised me. Some of them didn't take me off guard too much, but uh, it, it it truly shows the 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 seriousness and the widespread uh, of the issue. So uh, first, we got this statistic: over forty million Americans are regular visitors to pornographic websites. Wow. The average visit lasts 6 minutes and 29 seconds. There are around 42 million pornographic websites, which totals around 370 million pages of pornography. The pornographic industry's annual revenue is more than the NFL, NBA, and MLB combined. Is also more than the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBC. 47% of families in the United States reported that pornography is a problem in their home. Wow. That's a tremendous number. Pornography use increases the marital infidelity rate by more than 300%. 11 is the average age that a child is first exposed to pornography, and 94% of children will see pornography by the age of 14. Wow. 56% of American divorces involve one party having obsessive interest in pornographic websites. 70% of Christian youth pastors report that they have had at least one teen come to them for help in dealing with pornography in the past 12 months. Mm. 68, this, this one stuck out, guys, the biggest to me. 68% of church-going men and over 50% of pastors view pornography on a regular basis. Of young Christian adults, 18 to 24, as Brother Gabe, you and I are age group, 76 actively search for porn. Bro, Matt, you know what's scary about this? These are just the people that were honest. Right, yeah. And I, I mean, that's... The, scary. That, that's, that's probably, <laughs> you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, that's that's, you know, all Christian based religions combined. Um, but the truth of the matter is, uh, that's in the Baptist church. That's the in independent fundamental. And sure. I know that from firsthand, knowing young young guys my age and growing up in a pastor's uh, home. stories. Right. Yeah, growing up in a pastor's home. I couldn't tell you the times it talked about divorces. Uh, and Brother Michael can probably attest to this. And, I mean, you, you're close to the pastor now. Uh, you know, I, I remember as a child, are you like uh -huh. jealous of him because he married Chelsea or something? He said, he said now. Like he, he said, said now. now. He said, he's kind of like. That's a, a little bit of a. Yeah, accusation. it was almost like a little bit of a poke there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Basically, you wouldn't be. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you wouldn't be close to the pastor. So. You uh, wouldn't be on this podcast. No, I'm kidding. So, uh, <laughs> I remember as a child, we would go 
uh, when I'd go with my parents, it'd be, man, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and my dad would get a phone call. I, we're having marriage trouble. We need you to come help. And he would have to pack us up. We would go, and we would sit in the car while mom and dad went inside to deal with a, a man and his wife. And uh, the majority of the time, that issue would come up almost every single time that issue would come up, whether it was um, by Internet, whether it was, you know, uh, norm, the, the majority of the time, any time a man's looking at another woman, it starts with that. Sure. So, uh, you know, it would come up in some sort, form or fashion. Yeah. So that really sticks out to me about the divorces. Um, some other numbers we got here, uh, 59% of pastors said that married men seek their help for porn use. 33%, and this was stuck out to me, a lot of times when we think about pornography, we think about it as a, a, a man's problem. Sure. Yeah. Think about it as something that uh, a man struggles with and deals with, but this says 33% of women aged 25 and under search for porn at least once per month. Wow. Now, I've seen a, another statistic as I was looking, obviously, you know, some people are going to get different numbers. I seen the other day that it said um, 28% of all pornographic use is women of all ages. So uh, we got that. We got this. Only 13% of self-identified Christian women say they never watch porn. 87% of Christian women have watched porn. 55% of married men and 25% of married women say they watch porn at least once a month. 57% of pastors say porn addiction is the most damaging, damaging issue in their congregation. And 50, or 69, excuse me, 69% say porn has adversely impacted the church. And the last number I got here, only 7% of pastors say their church has a program. This, this is terrible. Only 7% of pastors say their church has a program to help people struggling with pornography. I don't think people realize that how thick this sin really is. Sure. Yeah. You, you, you the don't, layers. You don't realize. Well, I, I, I just think how, like how that last number. That last yeah. number talking about only seven percent of churches. Uh, I I know a lot of churches. I mean, we don't, but I know a lot of churches. We have jail ministries and whatnot, but have RU programs sure. and have. Um, you know all, all these different programs to help ministries. Uh, yeah, alcohol and drug abuse, uh, but this is as big a drug as point or as and more alcohol. Dangerous. Yeah, this is as big a drug as alcohol has ever wanted to be, if not greater, because I, I I would say the effect is greater in the church, maybe not in the world, but the effect is greater in the church than alcohol or drug abuse has ever been. Sure. Well, and I think the the reason now is we're in a uh, Uncensored society now. That's great. I mean, if you you can't watch a commercial at all. I That's mean, right. without something being on, you know, something filthy. Some. I mean, back in the day, you couldn't even watch a hardest commercial. I mean, I'm serious. Yeah. It was just everywhere. You went to the grocery store. You went to Walmart. There was some form of fashion of a of a young girl who didn't have quite a, the amount of clothes on that she should have, and it's become so easy to get. It's almost built into a young man's mind in this generation from the time he can think till he grows up. He's consistently hit with the idea of finding a woman or, or looking at her and, and not giving her the respect of her body. Right. And the two things about that, I, I think about this, that last statistic Brother Matt gave, which was uh, only 7% of pastors say their church has a program to help people struggle with pornography. I think about our church has a security we have security. Uh, I guess you'd say not really a ministry, but we have security protocol. I have men that are security here around the church. Yep. Um, it, at first, right, about 10 years ago, we started that up and got it organized. And, uh, and so our security team, um, you know, it, it was one of those things that when we started it, you'd have revival meeting and people would come and they'd say, hey, who are these guys? Because you could see they had a little clear coils going up to their ear. We tried to be as inconspicuous as possible. We didn't want people talking about it. And we actually had pastors make fun of us for having something like that um, and, and having security and having people pay attention to the parking lot and cameras and all that. We had other churches come in and say, ah, that's overkill. That's, you know, and it was kind of a scary thing, too. But then you let a couple of church shootings happen, 
you let you know things let what happened down in Charleston. They come asking how to do it. Yeah, and people's calling saying, "Hey, do y'all have like a book? How did y'all yeah. do that?" Well, here's the thing about it is. You take this, and, and there are so many churches that are not equipped to deal with it, and now it's become widespread. It's like a forest fire, and we're out here with like a water pistol trying to stop it. Right. And, and until somebody does something, and that's, that's one of the reasons, one of the designs of this podcast, right. not yep. to supersede the preaching or the pastor, but it's to maybe give some information. Yeah, about, no, a pastor can't get no, up and preach on pornography every week. You've been a youth pastor week. for 13 or 14 years. 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. How prevalent has it been since you began as a youth pastor? The statistic you gave, pretty, pretty at least once every 12 months, pretty at similar. least once every 12 months. Right. And and I can't remember a time when it wasn't. Maybe more than one. It's always yeah. been more than one case in a year's time of somebody struggling with or somebody coming saying. Well, I, it's one know. of those, it, it's, it's an area that, Obviously, if I was if I was in it, I wouldn't want nobody to know. Sure, right. it's but it is also an area that without somebody knowing, it, nothing's ever done about it. Um, you know, I remember as a child, and you know, the the Lord relates us to His children. I remember as a child, I would keep doing I would I would keep doing something if I didn't know I wasn't getting if I if I didn't know I was going to get in trouble That's over. True. It. You know, if it. But here's the thing: if my daddy was around, I wouldn't do it. If my daddy was somewhere around, it didn't happen, That's and that might be a big issue. Uh, the reality of it is, we 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 threw it under the rug. Yeah, we've covered it up. Nobody wants to talk about it, and it's an issue that uh, is tearing families, churches, and the United States of America apart. Sure. Here's and uh, nobody wants to do anything. The strength of it, just to give you an example, I'm I'm 36. Well, at the end of this episode, I will be 37 years and three days. Happy birthday. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, you can see April your cards, 15th, guys. Cards, we'll letters. Money, check, money checks. Anything. Yes, yeah, send it. Send it to 2032. Uh, 2019. <laughs> Love Valley Ford F-150 Larry. That, anything. <laughs> so, um, I'm 37. I'm, well, 37 years old. 36 at this recording, but in the next couple of days, I'll turn 37. So, I'm 37. And I remember being the very last year I was in public school, second grade, Kaiser Elementary, Kaiser, North Carolina. And a young man in that second grade class brought home or brought to the class pornographic material. And to this day, that was, I was in second grade, so that puts me about 30 years ago. To this day, mm. I can remember, I, I remember the cover of that magazine. I remember the pictures he opened it to. I remember the school teacher violently grabbing him and escorting him out of the classroom <laughs> because she, well, she she protected. I, but I, I know, remember that. I know one of my years later. one of my best friends has told me before that you know before he got saved that he was addicted to it, and he told me he said, you know, it could be it could have been a, the, the littlest amount, and he still remembers it that easy. You That's talked about that. remembering the cover. It's easy to remember things that. Or it's, it's difficult to remember some things, but that's something that gets you in your mind. It'll yes, never get out. Leaves an never imprint. Get out. Leaves an imprint. I think that uh, the reason, one of the biggest reasons we're dealing with this is if we could only see, and only time will tell really in people's lives on how this has affected people. Um, and and I, I thank God that both three of us could, could strongly say that obviously we don't, we're not struggling in this area. We wouldn't be yeah. talking about it. Um, but in all three of our lives, Pornography has affected us in a different angle. Sure. Um, I oh, think yeah. of how I grew up. I grew up with a good mom and daddy, but brother Matt, me and you were the guinea pig generation of uh, how this thing got out to be in the in the internet. You know, back in the day, it Apps, was yes, smartphones, everything, social media, everything. I remember when my dad got the first cell phone in our family. It was a little small flat phone that I mean, the the screen was that big. And getting older, and he didn't ever have a bag phone. Yeah, no, never had the bag phone. Looking at a cigarette line, and uh, <laughs> but I remember stuff like that. But um, well, but don't. all that, no, there was something like that. My hey, dad, you my, saw it was in the museum. My dad had something like <laughs> stuff that we used. My I was generation. about to say Michael remembers that. <laughs> but, I don't remember um, that. He uh, hooked up just, just growing up and seeing how how times changed, and a lot of parents don't realize. I can't remember the statistic. I think it was thirteen percent of parents 
know that their that their teenagers is, is, is looking at pornography. The rest of them have no clue. Uh, and I think that's a lot to do with the the accessibility of the internet now. Sure. Because nobody realizes how easy it is well, to view pornography. They think it's no big deal. They trust their son, and, but they don't realize people, how easy I'm it fr- is. I think a lot of people choose to be choose to be oblivious. They choose to be naive to it. I think of a lady literally that I work with was talking about her own child. Now, she don't go to church, uh, but she was talking about her own son. I think he's 13 or 14 years old. And she told me, she said, well, I'll tell him like 30 minutes or so before, you know, I check his phone and I'll yeah. check it. And, I, uh, you know, wow. as long as I don't see it, then. That's like not... saying, hey, do it, but just don't let me find it. That's, That's just crazy. It's like buying a pack yeah. of cigarettes for your kid and saying, don't smoke it in front of me. Yeah. I mean, I always heard this. I always heard this mess growing up, you know, about schools giving out, uh, you know, contraceptives. But in the end, that's the same thing you're doing as a sure, parent. Sure. You know, you're saying, if you're going to do it, just don't do it this just way. Just don't let me know, you know. Yep, that's right. It is well, so strong. Uh, we're going to move on to the second portion of this podcast. But before we do that, we want to talk about a Bible giveaway. Well, I like my coffee cup today. Best dad ever. Did you buy that for yourself? I did buy that for myself. Amen. Thank you very much. When uh, you have to pay for all them youngins, then you do what you want to do with your money. Reward Matt, yourself. That's right. I reward so, myself a little better than a coffee cup, though. <laughs> so, Brother Matt, uh, again, thank you, local church Bible publishers out hey, of man. Michigan for helping us with this. Brother Matt, you tell it's a little bit Lansing, about these Bibles. Lansing, Michigan. Lansing, Michigan. All right, so we're going to do a little Bible giveaway. And uh, we've got four note, beautiful note-takers Bibles, uh, all from local church. Uh, we got... Natural cowhide, which I believe is the is that signature. Is that what it's called? I think it's called that. Uh, it's a $50 value here. We got uh, an iron calf skin, note taker's Bible. Executive. Which is the executive line. It's a $62 value. And uh, so we got a nice bright red uh, note taker's Bible here. It is, it's also iron calf skin. It's uh, executive as well, $62 value. And uh, we have a three-tone. You can't really see it in the wrapper here, but uh, it's got three, three, three different, piece. three yeah. piece, yeah, uh, iron cast skin, and uh, it's a sixty-dollar value note taker. So our desire is to give away uh, some of these Bibles. Now we're only going to do uh, one every now and then. We're going to do one today, and uh, this is how we're going to do it. Uh, if you will, you know, like the page, obviously, and uh, like us, follow us on uh, Facebook. Now we're we're going to do it Facebook only. And the reason we do that is just to keep it, uh, that's the majority of our following. If you're on Instagram, if you'll message me and let me know, then we might be able to do something. Sure. But uh, we're going to keep the, try to keep the promotion, the giveaway, Facebook only. If you will like us and follow us on uh, Facebook and then share, uh, you know, whatever you share, just make sure that I see it because I'm not able to keep uh, keep my eyes on everybody that shares it. If you share it, just send me a message and, uh, you know, screenshot it. Or, you know, I should be able to see, you know, if you share something, if you'll send that to oh, me and let me and know. And leave, leave a review on Facebook. Yeah, if you could leave a review, that would be great too. Yep. And uh, let us know what you think about us and, you know, get the word out. Let others know, uh, you know, how, how you feel about the podcast. As long as you feel good about it, you know. If you don't like us, don't say nothing. So, uh, <laughs> and so that. Review. That's our tool of the week. It's brought to you this week by the local church Bible publishers in Lansing, Michigan. And the first, I, I guess we'll do the. We'll do it in two weeks, right? Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, you know, we need, we need a little time to let everybody get the video out and whatnot. So in two weeks, uh, two episodes from now, so episode five, so, we will announce the winner. And uh, the first and episode giveaway. Episode five, by the way, is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, we're going to be at the Morning Star Baptist Church. Recording Cleveland, episode North five Carolina. in Cleveland, North Carolina, Metropolis at the Youth Marathon. Oh, Don't yeah. blink or you'll that's going to be that's going to be Pastor pretty Ronnie neat. Young. Yeah, that's going to be pretty neat because we're going to have several other churches and hopefully they'll come in, join yep. up with us and oh, record yeah. that episode. That's going to be very good. It's going to be recorded. It won't be. We won't put it out live, but it will be in front of a live yep. studio audience. I guess. Oh said. yeah. So uh, we'll uh, give away home improvement, buddy. <laughs> first, we'll give away <laughs> the four hundred series mm-hmm. note takers, natural cowhide. And uh, go check out local church website. And uh, like I said, that's 400 series. And, uh, you know, check it out if you want to see more about it. Also, you know, look at everything they got on there. Sure. And they might find something you like. So don't forget, like, share, subscribe, put a review down, do everything you can do, comment to us. 
and uh, and the one that does the most, it seems like they really like it and enjoy it, then we will put, we'll do a drawing. We'll do a drawing and put a Bible in your Make hands. Make it fair. Make it fair for you, all right? <laughs> all right, second shift. Uh, we're going to talk real quickly. We spoke about the reality of it. Now let's talk about the ruin. Uh, Brother Matt, uh, we talked about, Brother Gabe, we talked about before about what it ruins. First of all, we mentioned uh, in speaking with one another that uh, it ruins trust. Oh, it yeah. ruins trust. And so, um, Brother Gabe, you want to speak to that about how it can really hurt, you know, the trust that someone has built up, especially between spouses, but then definitely with children and their parents. Oh, it yeah. ruins that trust. Well, and I think the biggest thing to, the easiest thing to lose is trust. Sure. It really is pretty easy. And I think once, because once you, you get caught viewing that, whether it was a spouse to another spouse or a parent to a child, sure. um, there's a there's a bond somewhat broken because you, you want to be able to trust your spouse. You want to be able to trust your, your child. But when that happens, you're consistently looking over them. You want to see what's going on. Right. And that makes that teenager, that spouse, uh, sometimes it makes them angry. Yeah. They don't like you not trust them, even though they've, they've created that issue. Yeah. And uh, but it should be like that. Unfortunately, I, I, I think it would be wise. I think it'd be okay to say it like this too. If that person is truly repented and they realize the severity of that sin, they understand that they have to be watched over from that point. Oh before. yeah, absolutely. whether that's a spouse or a child or whoever, a friend. And so it ruins trust, and then it ruins your testimony, brother Matt. You want to maybe speak to uh, to how it can ruin a person's testimony? Well, I mean. Uh, we got to realize, number one, that a, pers- a testimony is uh, not only just a testimony to those on the outside, because there's people who may never find out about it. Right. Uh, you know, there's probably many people in our church, uh, many people that we're in contact with every day that have viewed it, and we may know nothing about it, but somebody knows. Yeah. And the most important, right. the, the, the most important in the end is the Lord. Sure. Right. Okay. And. You know, there was only one person from the get-go knew about David's uh, sin with Bathsheba, and that was the Lord. There's only one person knew about it. Uh, But his testimony on the outside began to falter. Uh, He he started to, what did he do? He he called in Uriah and told Uriah, and Uriah knew something was wrong. Uriah knew something was up with David when he told him not to go to battle. Uh, He lost his testimony to uh, Joab when he sent... Can you imagine Joab being in Joab's shoes and sure. get receiving that letter, put Uriah out in the front of the battle, and uh, let Uriah die? And not figure at out until you come home yeah, that, that baby. At that point in time, his, his testimony is ruined. So it's t- your testimony may not be necessarily ruined from the fact that everybody knows about your pornography use. Right. But your testimony might get ruined from the, the effects of that pornography sure. use. Uh, you know, you begin, to, you begin to miss that. You begin to miss this. Uh, you begin to say this or do that, and uh, actions that you make. In other words, you can't help but come out. Right, right yeah. Right. In, in somewhere in your life, That's right. people may not know, people may not know, you know, you're watching pornography, but people are going to understand and they're going to be able to realize that something's wrong, and uh, your testimony is going to be scarred and ruined in areas where the, the, the you can do as much as you can to keep it from happening. I know... An instance off the top of my head right now of uh, a young lady that I know that is friends with a wife of a of a man that struggles with it. Okay, and to 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 that girl, to that girl, he has zero testimony wow. at all. It don't matter. He's a preacher. Yeah. He could preach. He could testify. He could do whatever. And as soon as he does that in church, it turns her off. Sure. Cuts her mood down, and uh, you know, to her, the spirit of God may, uh, you know, if if that guy's going to testify, probably as sensitive as the spirit of the Lord is, uh, he's probably going to leave. Uh, but even if he doesn't, that that lady's not going to get nothing the rest of the time. Yeah, uh, you know, the ones that know about that, uh, it's over. That's right. You know, they ain't getting nothing the rest of the time. If you're watching this and you're you're a teenager, we're, we're not over here making you try to feel like dirt. We're trying to hope you realize how awful this stuff is. And and if you're young and you don't really know much about this, I guess our our objective is to keep you from looking at this because it will ruin your life. I don't care how old you are, how strong you think you are. It will ruin you. It will. And the reality of of the ruin, the reality of the ruin, I guess you could say, is that David, um, you know, he messed up. He messed up. He, 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 He had some eternal lasting effects that were stamped on his home. Yep. But to... 
he was able to get back. He did have a Solomon after that. That's right. And, and God did, was able to use him again. That's but that mark that was on him, yep. it was mark. I mean, when you go through the scripture, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Yep. And so those are things that will, will you be able to. Yeah, it stains Forever. you. It's oh, a yeah. scar that will never go away. Will the forgiveness come? Yes. But. Well, I mean, you're talking about that. That restoration we may about, not come quite We talked quickly. about that trust. You know, uh, if it's a man and his wife, she ain't going to, I think I alluded to this, she ain't going to want you to go nowhere. She ain't going to want to yeah. go nowhere without you. She ain't going to want to leave you by yourself. Uh, you know, it ruins that trust between them. It ruins the trust between a parent. You know, if if they can't trust you to, you know, not to do that, they ain't going to be able to trust you to do anything else. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it follows you. And you can prove yourself time after time after time again. Sure. And David done great things after that. Oh, well, yeah. But as you mentioned, the Bible says, except in the matter, you ride the Hittite. Except in the matter, you ride the Hittite. Well, Stuck with him time and time that's again. Right. Well, we're coming to a close, but we, are, we do want to mention one more thing. It ruins trust. It can ruin or put a mar on your testimony. But then also, it's a ruin on your time. Mm-hmm. Most, in my experience as a youth pastor, assistant pastor, most of the people that I've spoke to about it and, and had to counsel them, it, it is something that happens in the wee hours of the night, Absolutely. in the time when they should be sleeping, or it, has, it happens in the early morning hours before everybody's stirring. And when you think about how it ruins their time, that is time that, number one, they could have, if it was during the time when they should have been sleeping, then they could have been sleeping. When God wanted them to be rested, uh, they could have been doing that. And then secondly, if it was in the early morning hours, that's when I spend most of my time reading, studying, praying. Think about all that I mean, time that Daniel Bain wasted. said, the closer you go, be the Lord's at three in the morning. Hey, that's what he said. <laughs> hey, hey the, Lord, the Lord doesn't sleep, but we do sometimes. Yeah, so uh, it ruins your time. All of that time you could have been praying or that's getting right. closer to God is spent. Filling your mind, filling your eyes with the filth of the world. And then on top of that, you're allowing that, you're putting yourself, if you're saved, you're putting yourself back under the bondage that God rescued you out yeah. of when he saved you. I, think, I mean, I know we're going to get in, the next episode is going to be on the remedy, but uh, something to that effect. Spoiler what, alert. Yeah, what a difference it would make. What a difference it would make if you're, if, if that's what you're struggling with yeah. and that's how your morning starts. I, I I think God would be a liar if you began to start your morning with him instead of with that, That's right. and it didn't end very quickly. David very quickly. said this in Psalm 63. He said, Oh, God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Let me ask you a question as we're fixing, fixing to come to a close today. When you get up in the morning, is your mind on God? Is your mind on fellowship with the Lord? Is your mind on doing right for the glory of God? Or is your mind filled and contaminated with the things of the world and the curse of pornography? Friend, you need to turn to God, turn to his word, turn to him in prayer, repent, get right with God, and then put up some safeguards and strongholds and let God work in your life. And we're going to deal with that in the next episode. And so for Brother Matt and for Brother Gabe here on the Christian Construction Podcast, we thank you for tuning in and tune in again next week. Be sure to like us, share us, review comment, all that good stuff on Facebook, YouTube, and other forms of social media. We'll see you next week.